Hey guys, it's your girl Marielle. Welcome back to my channel, Friday Night Light Movie Reviews, where we do reactions and reviews to TV shows, movies, and other digital content. So today we are coming at you with our second video in our documentary series. Like I said in my last review, I created a playlist where I'm going to be reacting and reviewing documentaries. If you guys have any that I haven't seen or you're trying to see what my thoughts about it or just a mention, hit me up in the comment section, just let me know. And the documentary that we're gonna be reacting to today is another one from Hulu called Keep This Between Us. So before we go any further into that, you know what I'm gonna ask you guys, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button, share this video with your friends and family, and as always, hit me up on my other digital platforms, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok, okay. So like I said, this is going to be a documentary called Keep This Between Us, the basis of the documentary. We follow three women who were in an inappropriate student-teacher relationship. And through the course of this documentary, we see how it affected their lives, their family lives, and how it's still affecting them today. And just being in their truth and telling their truth with no shame and no guilt. So let's just jump right into it. So the first person we're gonna be talking about who actually directed and produced the documentary, her name is Cheryl. She was in an inappropriate relationship with her teacher from the age of 16 to 22. That is correct, I said 22, that is so crazy. She grew up and lived in a small town in Texas called Little M. Uh, she stated through this documentary that it was a very small town, predominantly ran by men, white men. Those are her words and her friend's words, not mine, so don't come for me. And basically, everything between your reputation, sports, whatever, the men in this town kind of like if they had a say in it, that's how it went. So we always ask ourselves, how does this even happen? How does a student teacher relationship even happen? So with Cheryl, she explains it because she had such a long standing relationship and she didn't even realize it was wrong. Even when her best friend found a letter from the teacher that was written to Cheryl, her best friend's parents went up to the school, they showed the school the letter, the teacher, the principal, everybody, he was saying, oh, sh this is a case of transference. She's just writing about what happens between me and my wife. And it's like, how is that even better? Why does a 16 year old even know your bedroom time with your wife? So for me, that was already a red flag. But because you live in a small town and people goes, oh, never, that'll never happen. And the fact that Cheryl was believed that this wasn't wrong, even though it was a secret. And, you know, and that's where the term grooming comes in and what we've been hearing that word tossed around for a couple of years now with a lot of the things that have come to light. So her best friend who wanted to do the right thing by her was basically blackballed from her high school, from her town, and she ended up having to be homeschooled for the rest of her high school experience just because no one wanted to admit it and Cheryl she said I took she did take her part in it but I mean can she really I mean I know people sit there and say 16 to 22 that's no longer grooming it is still grooming it's manipulation to the point where she wanted to be a film director which thank goodness she still went into that path even though with all this trauma she went to school in Utah because the teacher she was with told her he was going to be teaching in Utah. And the only reason why she knew that her relationship with him was inappropriate is because he was being investigated in Utah for having the same inappropriate relationship that he was having with Cheryl. At that point, that's when she knew it was wrong because she's like, oh, maybe I'm special and I'm the only one and people just don't understand my love, which is gross on his part but not on hers and you know she carried that shame with her through the course of her life she sits there and says that you know her childhood was taken from her her high school experience her 
complete 20s was a travesty because when the relationship ended up at ended at 22 now she has to go back and be like oh my god all these things that we was doing this relationship that I thought was real this love that I thought was real was manipulation was grooming was abuse I mean, it was so sad to the point where she was like, the music that I like, is it because I like it or because he likes it? And the way I write, my writing voice, is it my voice or is it his voice? And I can't even imagine how that would feel. And so she decided to walk in her truth and do this documentary. She did reach out to a couple of her friends. Some of them turned down um, to speak on this. She, side note before we get into the second uh, person, she interviewed a teacher who was like, he was disgusted. He couldn't believe this happened. Ooh, ah, ah. Just for him to shift blame to her by saying, you know, no one teaches you how to really be a teacher. We were just inexperienced kids trying to, you know, mushed it through trying to teach these kids. And it's like, you're 27, 28, you know what I mean? You're not kids. And Cheryl said, no, you're an inexperienced adult acting like kids, and this is what happened. And through the course of this documentary, we find out that that actual teacher named Tom was also being investigated for having an inappropriate relationship with a student at that school. It's still happening. There was a girl in this documentary that said the small town that she grew up in, it was just whatever we knew somebody was going to be in an inappropriate relationship with a teacher that's just our town's culture that's gross how was that your culture to be having inappropriate relationships with these young girls knowing that we're very impressionable which this doesn't just limit to young girls this happens to young boys too but i'm just saying like that shouldn't be the culture and as time goes on in this documentary we come to find out that a lot of places uh, justify this culture because of what the 90s was like. Because Cheryl, she was in high school in the 90s and we had Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, Mandy Moore, Pink, and they were all, Jessica Simpson, all dressing very provocative for their young ages. And to these disgusting men, it became, oh, that's a culture. It's, it was glamorized, which is gross, right? So the second person that we meet, her name is Allison. And when she was interviewed by Cheryl, they, their relationship with their teachers was very much identical. Um, hers started at 17 and hers ended at 22 as well. She lost her virginity to, to this man. And so someone basically was like, look, this is wrong. Um, she's now a teacher, which I think is beautiful and amazing that, you know, it didn't deter her from being who she wanted to be as an adult. She also wrote, wrote a book called Becoming Lolita. If you don't know the story about Lolita, it was a very young girl, about 11 and 12, that had this disgusting relationship with this older gentleman. And look it up, look up the story. You know, it was almost like a Roman Polanski, right? So she basically started to say, when she started realizing it was wrong, because he kept telling her, we got to keep this a secret. And she said this line that was so crazy to me. She was like, a secret doesn't equate to love. A secret doesn't equal love. A secret means you're ashamed. And if you're ashamed, how could there be love in that scenario? You know what I mean? And it's crazy because we don't talk. We talk to our kids about stranger danger, right? We tell them you don't get in a car on a one. You don't talk to anyone. You don't accept stuff. If it's not mommy or daddy or your guardian, you just don't do it. And I'm a mom. So this, this was crazy scary for me to watch because... At one point, at no point do we as parents tell our children, hey, be aware of these signs that our teacher is one is it looks like he's being inappropriate with you. You know, we don't talk to our children about that. And it's like now we have to start finding the correct narrative, finding the correct words to tell our children, you know, these are the things that you got to be aware of. You know, one, if you feel like this teacher is giving caring too much, invested too much in a more personable way than an educational way, then we gotta start pulling back and we're gonna have to start asking questions. And I thought that was a great thing for her to talk about. And that line, secret does not equal love. And that's what a lot of these groomers, these men and some women tell these young kids, right? Just horrible. Then we find out a term called passing the trash 
which initially means these schools, superintendents, principals, just as long as it doesn't get out, we'll just sweep it under the carpet and we just transfer the teacher out or we'll just tell the student and the parents they don't got to worry about it anymore. And that's not enough. This is why we have these situations, the Me Too movement, this grooming. I mean, this the scary shit that we got to tell our kids every day because nobody wants to pay attention to it. People want to sweep it under the carpet like, no way. It couldn't be Mr. James. It couldn't be Mr. Robert. It couldn't be Miss Williams. Yes, it was all of them. And we got to pay attention. And I think that this documentary very much did that, especially with this last young woman. She was in an inappropriate relationship with her teacher at 17. It did not last as long as Allison's and Cheryl's, but hers was, I don't want to say it was worse, but a lot of her abuse came inside the classroom where people were walking through the doors or walking past these classrooms not knowing. He manipulated her, right? He groomed her. And this wasn't his first time. This young girl, her name is Heaven Rubin. Out of all the women, her case is still going. There's still an open case. This man has not been brought to child trial. It's been six years. This man had this little girl giving him fellatio in the classroom, him giving it to her, her having sex with him on the floor in the classroom, letting this young girl believe that this is what's supposed to happen to the point where people started seeing her act a little funny. So the cops came and it was like, we know that you're having an appropriate relationship. She's like, no, you're wrong. He's like, you're not in trouble. We're investigating him because there's another girl out here saying he did the same things. So she found her truth. She found her strength. Each and every one of these young women at the time found their strength. And now that they're older, they're still living in that strength, still living in that truth. Because still at some point, you know, they all talk about feeling that shame losing parts of their family, losing some of their friendships, especially with Heaven Rubin. She's the youngest. She's 23 years old. I mean, she was in school in the 2000s, right? So her family kind of like disowned her because she went ahead with the tr with the suit for the, the city. I mean, not the city, the school. And they felt like she owed them because they sacrifice for her to go to school but it's like at the same time come on mom and dad you did sacrifice for your daughter to go to this very affluent high school but you didn't send her there to be manipulated groomed and initially sexually abused and stealing something that she can't get back that experience she cannot have that experience again however however she moves right so i definitely think that you guys should watch this documentary shoot this should be shown in schools just so we can see like the little nuances of things that could be happening with our children with our friends with our sisters with our brothers nieces and nephews right so thank you guys for sticking me with this video i know it's longer than my normal videos but this was a very personal um documentary for me because i have a daughter and I would never want her to go through these things that these women did. And you should definitely look this documentary up. These women are strong. They're powerful because they went through something so harsh and so traumatic. But they're still standing here saying like, look, I'm not going anywhere. You're not going to keep me hidden because of my shame. And y'all should be ashamed of yourselves, these abusers. So we are at the end of this video. Again, go check this out. It's on Hulu right now. As always, be safe, be courageous, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye. All I'm